Here is my TikTok about uh, the election victory in Chile and about the history of U.S. involvement in Chile. The people of Chile have elected progressive socialist candidate Gabriel Boric. And I hope I'm pronouncing his name right because this is an incredible victory for the Chilean people. In the 1970s, Chile elected a socialist president in Salvador Allende who was quickly overthrown by a U.S.-backed coup. Taking power in place of Allende was the brutal dictator Augusto Pinochet, who would go on to murder and torture thousands of Chilean socialists with techniques he was trained in by the CIA and with the backing of powerful Western countries including the UK under the leadership of Margaret Thatcher. Alongside this brutal state repression, Chile got economic advice from Milton Friedman, basically turning it into a laboratory for neoliberalism or trickle-down economics. Social programs were cut and publicly owned companies were sold off to wealthy capitalists and Western corporations, which brought those corporations tremendous wealth but increased unemployment, homelessness, malnutrition, food prices increased greatly, school milk programs were eliminated. Pretty much much everything got worse for the masses of Chilean society while getting better for the richest. But in 2019, the Chilean people took to the streets to demonstrate against neoliberalism. In 2020, they voted to abolish the constitution that was put in place by Pinochet. And now in 2021, they've elected a socialist leader who said if Chile was the cradle of neoliberalism, it will also be its grave. Shout out to all the organizers and people on the ground, including the Communist Party of Chile, who made this victory possible. It's time for an end to neoliberalism liberalism and U.S. imperialism in Chile and all of Latin America. The people of Chile have elected... Boom. Absolutely. So, big victory, um, especially given the history of Chile. Chile being, of course, one of the places um, with the most U.S. involvement um, with, uh, with the U.S.-backed coup. Um, Did progressive put, socialist candidate Gabriel... Which put... Uh, um, Augusto Pinochet in power, of course, one of the most brutal dictators uh, that the U.S. ever installed. Um, and, yeah, it's important to understand that Latin America and Africa um, largely have had neoliberalism and capitalism even imposed on them, right? It, it largely hasn't been a choice. It, it hasn't been, you know, a natural, natural um, form of development. Right. Imperialism and, and colonialism have imposed uh, unregulated capitalism, you know, capitalism with no social programs, with no labor regulations um, on these countries and done everything they could for years and years and years to to maintain that, to, you know, maintain um, a neoliberal economic structure. Um, and, you know, there's there's constantly been a struggle against that. And, and this is a continuation of it. Um, and everyone acts, you know, like, uh, socialism is, uh, um, dictatorial or authoritarian, right? But when you look at things like Operation Condor, where the U.S. did all these coups, like in Argentina, where they put this right-wing military junta in place, or in Chile, where they put Augusto Pinochet in place, um... They, they had the CIA train these leaderships um, in, in techniques of torture, right? In, in techniques of uh, targeting socialists to be tortured and killed, you know, and gave them financial backing and, and armed them uh, and launched what's known as Operation Condor all across the southern cone of Latin Amer America. Bolivia was affected, um, Chile, uh, um, uh, Argentina, as we just mentioned. And socialists were basically killed and tortured just for being socialists, including the infamous event in Chile where around 10,000 Chilean leftists who supported Allende were rounded up after Allende took power and were killed um, in Chile's uh, national soccer stadium. Um, so people, you know, people love to talk about how, how communist regimes have been dictatorial and have been authoritarian, when in reality capitalism has maintained itself, especially in Latin America and Africa, with mass murder, with mass murder and and targeted um, torture, torture for the purpose of, of torturing those who would struggle against capitalism, you know, and who would struggle for the working class and, and for their benefit. And this is how this structure has been maintained and how capitalism and, and neoliberalism have been imposed on Latin America and Africa for years. Um, and now you have, you know, 
the Chilean people demonstrating in mass in the streets against neoliberalism and against austerity in 2019 um, as social programs were being cut further in the face of the pandemic, you know, in order to maintain corporate profits, very similar to what we've seen in the neoliberal United States. Um, and then in 2020, they voted and, and had mass organization to uh, uh, dismantle the constitution that was put in place under Pinochet, the constitution that was put in place under the right wing U.S. backed dictator who was getting economic advice from Milton Friedman and was getting torture advice from the CIA. And now in 2021, late 2021, they've elected a socialist progressive candidate who said if Chile was the cradle of neoliberalism, it will also be its grave. Because Chile has often been described as the laboratory, you know, uh, of neoliberalism. Because you had Milton Friedman, um, as well as the Chicago Boys, all these right-wing, trickle-down, neoliberal economists. Um, yeah, boy! Ooh, thank you for the resubscription, Socialist YNWA. I really, really appreciate that. Um, so you had the Chicago Boys and Milton Friedman. Yeah, all these. Boy. Ooh, thank you for following, Verbi10. Um, all these other right-wing economists. Um, who basically got to do whatever they wanted with uh, Chile's economic system. So they sold off all the publicly owned companies. Yeah, um, uh, they cut all the social programs, um, including, you know, infamously cutting the, uh, the school milk program, uh, which is why people call Margaret Thatcher. Or, or did she cut school milk programs in, in the U.K. too? She might have, but she also, you know, was buddy buddy with Pinochet, who cut them in Chile, and some people call Margaret Thatcher like the the milk snatcher. She cut them in the UK too, yeah. So that's why people call her the milk snatcher or whatever. But she, uh, she also um, was buddy buddy. She would have tea parties and stuff with Pinochet. Like at least Ronald Reagan was smart enough or whatever to. He was rarely seen with Pinochet, despite the fact that the CIA and Friedman and all them had a, such a close relationship with him. But Margaret Thatcher would, like, hang out with him. They were, like, friends. It was uh, totally insane. So, you know, Chile has a long history of struggling against Western interventionism um, and struggling for socialism. This is a continuation of that. Um, the only problem, of course, or the only, you know, there are many problems that, they're gonna fa that they will face going forward, including U.S. intervention. Um, and, you know, of course, this is an, an electoral form of, you know, trying to move towards socialism. Um, and, and traditionally, socialism requires a dictatorship of the proletariat, right? A, a revolution where the workers completely seize power of the state apparatus, the government, um, so that they can use it to fight the bourgeoisie, fight the capitalists, and fight um, the forces of imperialism. Um, and, and construct socialism. But obviously, if you take power electorally, um, you're, you're limited in what you can do. You have to work through the existing state apparatus, whereas, you know, Lenin um, argued that it, the state apparatus needs to be broken up and rebuilt as something new, which can help the workers. Um, so, you know, that can be done to various extents, you know, after taking power electorally, uh, but it all depends on the, the amount of economic organizing you have on the ground, you know, on the amount of political power that workers uh, command because of their level of organization, you know, the level of grassroots organization, um, and, you know, they could they could go in a similar direction of Bolivia. Bolivia has probably been the best example of a success story of these sort of electoral forms of socialism. Um, you know, you could throw Venezuela in there as well. But um, really, the more the more of these sort of left wing socialist candidates there are across Latin America, the more the whole continent can work together against U.S. imperialism and work against Western imperialism. Um, you know, so there have been various uh, sort of um, I guess you would call this uh, the return of the pink tide, you know, in, in the early late um, 90s and early 2000s, there was a pink tide um, in Latin America, meaning like not a red tide, not a bunch of communist movements, but a lot of socialist electoral movements, you know, who took power. Um, and then there was a backslide, you know, there was a backslide and, and neoliberalism started to regain a foothold in around 2015 to 20, 2019. And now, you know, from 2019 to 2021, we've seen a resurgence of the pink tide, um, a resurgence of socialist leaders and, and a resurgence of organizing on the ground um, and organizing of workers um, and struggles against imperialism with varied levels of success, you know, um, and with various efforts by the U.S. to dismantle these um these experiments so yeah we'll we'll see what happens but as always 
you know, solidarity with the, the organizers and with the socialists and with the workers, with the people on the ground um, in Chile. So, yeah. Love it. She took me mom's milk. Dang it, Margaret Thatcher. We have heavy U.S. intervention in the U.K., but nobody wants to talk about it. That's actually true. I agree with you, socialist YNWA. And, you know, France, even France and Germany have recently started saying, you know, we don't want to be the U.S.'s lapdog. You know, we don't want to, um, because we are part of NATO, you know, uh, help the U.S. and their reckless interventionism all around the world. You know, they've started to move in that direction. Um, and it's looking like, you know, NATO will not be the main uh apparatus of imperialism that western countries use going forward um, but rather it'll be AUKUS the trilateral military agreement between the US the UK and Australia which is aimed uh, mostly at threatening China um, you know because it's looking like France and Germany at this point have less interest in uh, uh, helping the US um, uh, in their new cold war against China here uh, so yeah we'll see where that goes it's it's very interesting um, interesting to watch it play out got a really awesome video from the 2019 protest to show i hope we see this in the u.s someday all right let's check this out this looks great Thank you for sending that video. That's awesome. Um, and you see the amount of, of people who are there, you know, and that's that's what I'm talking about when I talk about the, the mass organization on the ground and how that is the most important thing, right? The organization of the people. Um, leadership is important, uh, but it's, you know, leadership is nothing and it's worthless without organization on the ground. Organization on the ground is what socialism and class struggle are built around. It is essential to it. It is, you know, the core of socialism and communism is, organi is organization among the proletariat um, and among the people and, and struggle against capital. So, you know, people ask, you know, aren't you aren't you guys at Midwestern Marx Marxist Leninist or Eddie, aren't you a Marxist Leninist? You know, and Lenin says that the state apparatus needs to be, uh, you know, um, destroyed, shattered is the word he uses and, and rebuilt as an apparatus to help workers. Um, and, and don't you think a revolution needs to happen, you know, in, a real revolution in which workers seize full power of the state? Um, and it's like, one, Marxism can be adapted, right? So if, if these countries show that they are able to construct socialism without, you know, doing these steps laid out by Lenin, which were laid out for the Soviet Union in 1917, you know, uh, then, then that means these are, you know, these things that these Latin American countries are doing electorally work. You know, that means that they can be a, um, a path to constructing socialism. But then the main reason I support them is because of the, the level of organization on the ground. Like you saw um, in that video, the, the mass amount of people um, coming together to, to fight against, you know, the Pinochet Constitution and imperialism and, and neoliberalism and all these things. You know, and, and that's why I support, you know, these, uh, these socialist countries like Nicaragua, um, like Venezuela, like, um, uh, and, you know, all the, the new ones that we hopefully see moving towards socialism now. Um, like Honduras had a, a recent... Um, socialist progressive election victory and now we have um, Chile 
Um, because I support these people in their struggle for socialism, right? I support the organization and the struggle of the people on the ground, even if it isn't exactly step by step the process that Lenin laid out, like I said. You know, they have mass organization. And like in Bolivia, as the struggle develops, uh, you know, as the struggle for socialism continues, um, it does start to look more like a traditional revolution. So in 2019, you have, um, or before 2019, you have the Bolivian people calling to arm the revolution, right? Saying the people on the ground, uh, these, these masses of organized workers, um, need to be, you know, trained and armed for the purpose of self-defense because we never know when the U.S. is going to do a coup. You know, we never know when imperialism is going to try and destroy the struggle for socialism in Bolivia. What happened in 2019? A horrific uh, CIA-backed coup. Now, the organization on the ground was strong enough that the country, you know, went, uh, had a mass strike, um, massive efforts and demonstrations against the violent right-wing government uh, it put in place by the U.S. who violently suppressed um, the organized workers who did need to defend themselves from that. And then eventually, you know, Luis Arce, uh, the economic advisor of, um, Evo Morales, the, the, the president who the U.S. took out, um, won election and was put back in power, even though there was mass suppression by the right wing U.S. back government um, on the day of the elections. You know, they were attacking people going to the polls. They were attacking um, supporters of the movement for socialism. So you see, you know, as capital uh, and capitalism and, and the bourgeoisie, the ruling class, start to uh, see their, their grip on power leaving, they start to violently suppress the workers. They start to violently suppress the masses. And the masses need to respond by increasing their level of organization and in increasing their means of, of defending themselves. Um, so things start to look more like a traditional revolution. So, um, yeah, that's, that's my thoughts on... Uh, the the electoral process of, of constructing socialism that we've seen in Latin America. So.